new to Thailand, but this, uh, and I've seen a few temples, this temple here is without question one of the most beautiful. The massive golden Buddha in the seated Mara position, which is beautiful, but then the Vihan that it is housed in and the, and the, um, the images that are painted on the wall it's just so beautiful. It's really, really impressive. I love this temple. So I'm new to Bangkok, so I, I'm traveling around trying to explore and learn a lot about, uh, as much as I can, about Thailand, in particular Bangkok. So today I've started here at this magnificent temple. It's one of the best temples I've ever seen. It's just so beautiful inside. Uh, and my quest today is basically trying to learn a little bit more about religion, religion and religious sites here in Bangkok, in particular around the the uh, Ratsanakosan and Ban Rak and Sampan Tawong area around the Chinatown kind of area. So this Wat here is called Wat Futat Tep Wa Ra Rum Tep Wa Ra Rum. It's a royal temple of the first grade and there's only 10 of these in all of uh, Bangkok. It's 23 in total in Thailand, but there's only 10 first grade temples in all of Bangkok. So this is very special, this one. Uh, the construction of this temple began during the period of King Rama I in 1807. Uh, further construction and decorations were also carried out by King Rama II. Uh, but it was not, this whole temple here was not complete until King Rama III. King Rama III and it was completed in 1847. Around the lower areas of this you'll see a lot of Chinese pagodas and there's actually 28 and that symbolizes the 28 Buddhas that have been born to this earth. In total there's more than 150 Buddha images in this here temple. Now the Buddha image in this uh, Vihan is actually from the Sukhothai period and it's 800 years old. Now this image uh, was cast in bronze in 1361 and it was initially installed in Sukhothai. And then it was actually left when the uh, Sukhothai kingdom fell, it was actually left it just took in, in ruin for centuries. And and exposed to the elements. But it was not until 1808 that King Rama had this image floated down the Chao Phraya River. And when it arrived, it was actually so big that they couldn't get it through the, through the city walls. So they actually had to smash down the city walls to get this image into the city. Now King Rama I actually helped with this. He physically helped smash the walls down and physically helped drag the Buddha image from the river to where it is here in this temple. He led the procession and it was, it was noted that he did this all barefoot, barefooted. Now he put so much effort into this. Now it was observed that he was actually not traveling so well, but this was so important to him that he wanted to get the job done. So his aides were suggesting that he rest, but he brushed them off and continued helping with the transferring of this Buddha image. Now the last act, once they finally got this Buddha image into its place, the last act was to hoist the image. He helped hoist this massive image into place and when he did this he whispered to his sister, King Rama I whispered to his assistants that his work was done. And unbelievably within hours he actually passed away. So this was his last act, moving this Buddha image into place.
nearby is the giant swing. That's the most peculiar landmark, and I'm going to go and have a bit of a look at that because it is actually kind of part of this temple here. like structures that are dotted around the perimeter of this vihar. Now I can tell it's a vihar because we have the center stone and we've got them as I can see three at the rear here and one two three I think there's eight eight center stones but then I've also got these really cool archways here as well. It's the most uh, most peculiar perimeter of this vihar. So not only the inside is great, but the outside is great right here as well. So here's this uh, archway, these really cool archways. I feel special sitting on this throne. I hope I'm not uh, breaking some religious taboo by sitting here. It does feel good. I like it. I've got a little cool breeze coming in and I think we're going in for a little shower. So it might be time for me to retreat to a cafe for a while. One other thing I find that's most unique about Thailand is the rain. We're in the rainy season at the moment. Now, I'm at this temple. Now, if you look over here, it's all dry, completely dry. Now, if I walk about, what is it, about 25 meters, I get to an area where it was raining. It's just remarkable how like, isolated or the, the rain is here in Thailand. You start to kind of now I've been living here for, for a couple of years, I start to make decisions based on the rain, which are basically, oh, should I go out? It's like, well, it's raining here, but is it raining at the end of my street? So here, this area here, wet, it was raining here. So uh, yeah, end up using, so life in Bangkok, you end up using weather apps a lot. You don't just look at the weather in Bangkok. You need to be very specific about which area you're at and where you're going. So you need satellite image apps to make your decision when, when traveling around Bangkok. That's my pro tip. Download a really good weather app when you're in Bangkok so you don't miss out on any action. I'll give you another story. Yesterday, I looked at the weather app and it seemed like it was gonna rain. So I thought, okay, I'm not gonna go out and film today. In the end, it didn't rain at all. So, <laughs> moral of the story is, check the weather, but don't let the weather dictate your fun. So, check the weather app. And it appears the giant swing, which is about a hundred meters away, is indeed dry. In fact, it's dry here now. It rained over there, not over here. So I'm going to go to the giant swing now and have a bit of a look at that and tell you what it's all about. Yes, there are indeed eight semi stones outside this pot. And these archways, which are guarded by, they don't look very scary. Looks like some uh, comic duo, comedy act. They don't look intimidating at all. Just leaving Wat Sut Hat now and I am heading to the giant swing. Now Wat Sut Hat is fantastic. If you ever get the chance, be sure to visit that temple. It's absolutely beautiful.
Uh, here's a curious site. There's the big temple just here, of Tutan. And then right next to it is the Vishnu temple. So, say to understand that uh, Hinduism and Buddhism, there's a big connection there here in Thailand. I need to find out a little bit more about that. Once I find out, I'll let you know. This is the giant swing. Now, back in the good old days, it actually used to be a swing. They used to have uh, the ropes and a big plank, so men would stand on the planks. Now, the idea just nearby, they'd have little bags of money. So the guys would swing and swing and swing and then jump to try and catch the bag of money, and if they did, it's theirs. So this kind of a tradition happened for quite a few years, uh, but they put a stop to it because few of the people who uh, were participating ended up dying. They were swinging so high and they were landing, so they actually had too many deaths. So they put an end to the actual uh, swing competition. Now it's just this curious monument out here in Bangkok. And it's just out in front of Wat Sutat Wararam 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 Sorry if I'm saying it wrong. I'm pretty sure I'm saying it wrong, but just please forgive me. I'm new to Bangkok and I'm learning. And in fact, that's what these videos are all about. Me learning about Bangkok and this marvelous city and sharing what I learned with you all. Wat Sutat Chekwara Ram Racha Wara Mahawal Ram. I've been learning Thai. Uh, and I'm not very good at it. That bus looks pretty cool. It's a Thai bus food tour. Now, we're actually pretty close to J5. J5, J5. She's a Michelin star chef. She's got a restaurant just around the corner and she was featured in the popular Net Netflix series called um, Chef's Table. If you haven't had a chance, check it out. She's a real character.